Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 167. This episode is with my friend Benjamin Lancaster. You may know him best as the writer and director of The Further Adventures of Walt's Frozen Head, or as the creator of the audio series Prototype World of Tomorrow. I've worked with Ben for a few years now, and this was long overdue. We talk about him putting on Christmas pageants with his family growing up, always wanting to write and direct, directing a live audio drama for Indiana Public Radio, the intricacies of getting your eyebrow pierced, a lot of behind-the-scenes talk from Walt's Frozen Head, his inspiration for World of Tomorrow, a little tease for the upcoming Season 4, and so much more. Ben is fantastic. Keep an eye out for the new season of Prototype World of Tomorrow. It'll be available on his Patreon October 25th and available for everyone else two weeks after that. So if you want it early, get in there. I'm so excited for you guys to hear what we cooked up this time. It's wild. I'm talking crazy. I, it's, you're not prepared. Just bring a helmet. It's going to be awesome. So until then, you've got this episode to hold you over. So let's get into this, friends. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the interesting podcast, number 167, with Benjamin Lancaster. Initiate theme song. said 80 degrees i just like upped it to 80 degrees like it's usually okay. like 72 73 <laughs> i was about to say and because you know in florida it's really hot so we keep ours at 74 all the time uh-huh but is yeah. your house like one room is significantly colder than all the others my basement is significantly colder and that is really yeah. exaggerating exaggerated um certain times of the year sure like, yeah so So sometimes the year the basement gets really cold. Like it seems like in the winter, it's actually not as bad because it's the, you know, the system's constantly pumping out hot air and it's pumping into the basement too. Sure. Like when the system's not running that much, it Uh tends to get really cold down the basement. My office is in the basement. So. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Basement. It's a walkout. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. So we have hills. (laughs) First of all, we have hills. Basement word you speak of. (laughs) But it's not really a basement because like, I walk straight out to my yard from it. So it's, oh. it's like a half base, but like only half of it's the underground. Weird. So like I've got a big window in my, in my office. What? It's, it's nice. It's great. So you kind of have a two story house. Just the second story is inside of a hill. Yeah. 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 And that's oh. really common here. Walkout basements are super common. Interesting. Actually, you know what? That mm-hmm. makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. Cause my wife's grandma has a house and she has a basement. But the basement mm-hmm. does lead outside. I just never yeah. thought about it. Depends. It depends. Like in flat places, you don't do that. Like if you build the basement in like Illinois, which is really flat right across right. the river from us, there's no walkout. It's like, that's crazy. You just dig the basement for the foundation and you're done. But gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Totally different world. Yeah. 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 No, I know. Like you, you, you dig a hole for yeah, three feet and you're underwater. I've done you it. I get a little galoshes. Yeah. I've, I've done it. There was a time this would have been, I was like 18 ish and I was just like, I'm going to dig a hole. And so I grabbed some friends and I was like, let's just dig a hole for no other reason. This is such a guy thing to do. It is. Though. Like Isn't this is fantastically weird? male. Yeah. It was just one of those things. Like I'm digging a hole. Did strangers come around and join you? Cause that's kind of what I'm picturing <laughs> at this point. I called in favors. Um, uh-huh. we, we used someone's backyard and they were like, have at it. And we ended up digging a hole that was like 10 feet wide by like, we got to three feet deep, but right at like three and a half feet, complete water. We're like, well, all right. That is the the width versus depth is, is kind of, uh, but I guess you're talking about sand though. Like really Florida is just sand. That's true. Cause right here out here, it's clay. Like I could literally dig a hole straight down. There's no problem. Like it's crazy. It's just, it's like, you know, and yeah, it's clay. Like it's just solid actual earth mm-hmm. well yeah. yeah it's not even good for growing things like, yeah it's too, i don't want it to grow in clay like, i don't want it to grow yeah if you want to plant a garden you got to bring in soil so oof yikes 
Yeah, I I mean, we had this conversation while we were recording where I was assuming that you were from Florida originally, and that is not the case. And also, I knew you for, it's been, have we been working for three years almost together? Yeah, I mean, we cast this originally in 2019. So yeah, we're coming wow. up on three. That's nuts. Yeah. So for the mm-hmm. first years of our friendship, I mm-hmm. thought you were from Florida. And I thought you were in Florida. And neither of those things are true. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm from Missouri. I'm in Missouri. I was in Florida for a brief, all too brief three years. I really enjoyed it. Kind of felt like, so there was a comic book of Godzilla. Bear with me. Okay. There was okay. a comic book of Godzilla in the Marvel universe. Uh huh. And somehow he is transported back to the age of the dinosaurs. Oh. And I, I don't remember the full story. It was a Fantastic Four comic with Godzilla. Okay. Anyway, I'm in. Um, and he gets the age of the dinosaurs and he sniffs around and he goes, I'm home. Like, <laughs> that's, and I'm not saying like it was that complete with Florida, but it kind of was. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, you know, I really, that's, that's kind of where I belong. I've decided. So I'm just trying to figure out, figure out a way back there. Like, there's family, there's grandparents, there's all kinds of things, but gotcha. so you've, have you ever lived anywhere but Florida? Yeah, I was born in North Carolina and I lived there for okay. the first six years of my life. I lived on a farm up there and then we oh, moved wow. oh. down to Florida and I've been in Florida since. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So that's been, a, that's been a while then though. It's been I a mean, while. Yeah. I'm, I'm 30 is... now. <laughs> so it's been 24 years. This oh, I past. think you were a few years older than that. I didn't no, know you. Okay. Not quite. How old are you? 36. Nice. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I'm just turned 30 in July. Actually, we're in what month are we in? We're in October. Okay. So this mm-hmm. past August, it was 24 years I've been down here. Okay. Yeah. But it's weird That's because I've like when we talk about North Carolina, we're like, oh, we're we're gonna go home for a little bit. Like North Carolina has been in our brains as home. Isn't that weird? Really? Yeah. Like your whole family or just my I mean, whole family is all or? still up there. Really? Yeah. Okay. So all ex- whole extended family is still there. Huh. All of it. Yeah. So it was just my mom, my dad, and my brother. And we just went south to Florida. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. 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 What part of Missouri are you from? St. Louis. Okay. That's where you're at now. Mm-hmm. That's where mm-hmm. I'm at now. Okay. I, I see am. Mm-hmm. I like as far west as you can go and still actually be in the county of St. Louis. So, yeah. Okay. Right there on the border. All right. All right. You said you had family in Florida, though. Is that how I'm no, sure no, you've no, been no. there before? I, I, I mean, I, I, no, I, I didn't have family in Florida. I have family here. Like here, oh. here's the family. That's, that's what brought me back. So gotcha. That's what brought you back. Yeah, so what yeah, made yeah. you go to Florida? Um, I went for the UCF. Like that's kind gotcha. of what, what, what the draw was. I was getting my master's degree and they had a program. They still have a program that uh-huh. lets you make a feature film. Oh, I okay. when I make two feature films. So I didn't want to get an MFA and I wanted an MFA because I was teaching college at the time. Sure. I was like, I need this MFA because that gets me like better jobs, right? Like that gets you on the tenure track. That gets you a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I want the, I want the terminal degree. So I was looking around at programs and, and a lot of the MFA programs are just like, and you make a 12 minute short at the end for your feature. And it's like, I made right. two features already. I'm not doing yeah. this. Like, <laughs> like, it seems like I'm going backwards. You know, in sure. retrospect, maybe, you know, you spend a lot longer on a 12 minute short than you do on 12 minutes. Of your... Anyway. Sure. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I came down to Florida and was making this film and like decided, you know, that's why I came in. And you know what? I was like, hey, theme parks are, you know, a big part of it. And so I'm going to also do theme parks. And, you know, that, that kind of sweetened the pot, right? When I'm looking sure. at... Um, Looking at uh, New Orleans was one of the other choices, and uh, you know sure. Tallahassee was one of the other choices. They don't have theme parks. That yeah, doesn't sound fun. <laughs> You're right. What, what am I going to do for fun? Sure. So then, when did your interest in entertainment start? If you came down here to get the master's in film, but you'd already done stuff before, and you like entertainment, or like uh, that's a that's a pretty broad term. That's like, true. So I guess I'll I'll back it up even more. Be like, did you originally want to be? An actor, a writer, or a director? Because you do all now, are those we things. actually making a podcast at this point? Because oh yeah, this will be all edited. Later. T- <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I didn't know we actually started. I, I was expecting that's what I intro, do, Ben. So. That's what I do. All right, fantastic. We are just in. I thought we were just chatting beforehand. That's the whole thing is just chatting. You think I have questions? Great. Ben? 
<laughs> no, no, no. I just I was expecting and welcome to the interesting podcast and the thing. No, and the no, thing and the that, thing and the, that's yeah. professional, Ben. You should you spend enough time with me to know. <laughs> Those do not coexist. <laughs> okay. All right. I, yes. I, I cannot remember a time when I didn't want to write and direct things. Cool. Like I, I, I literally can't. I was five years old and I was writing a Christmas pageant that I handed out to all of my cousins on Thanksgiving. Dude. And then expected them to have memorized by Christmas. <laughs> that is more than enough time. Of course. Come I did on, this man. for at least seven years. Like there are seven years of, of Christmas pageants in some file folder in my mother's basement somewhere. That's hilarious. Um, did they ever do it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We did it every year. Oh, like, look this at was you. Not, it's not optional. Yeah. So. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I finally kind of gave it up when I went into high school. Like that was sure. kind of like stop being cool. So. <laughs> right. That's wild. And it was always the two, like you're, I'm writing this. We're handing out the pages, like an old school, like theater teacher. Like, listen, yeah. these are your parts. Here's what we're going to do. I didn't ask. Uh -huh. Yeah, not asking. Just we're, we're doing this. Sure. Was it theater? Like, was theater the goal or did you always want to make movies? I mean, theater was theater was here. It was close. It was doable. Right. Um, and I, you know, I like I'm doing I'm doing audio drama now. Like, I, to yeah, me, it's are. not it's not the I don't know. I like I, I like movies a lot. I just. I don't know. It's not, it's not the, the genre. It's kind of just what you're doing. So sure. like, I'll do a podcast. I'll do a, th I'd, I'd love to get back into live theater. I love live theater. I love movies too, though. So, I mean, they all have their pros and cons and I, I agree, you know, I like doing all of them. Okay. I'm down with that. Did you, so then how did you get involved with the, uh, the Indiana public radio? Um, that's a very good question. That's I what can't I do, actually ben. remember the no no I can't remember the origin <laughs> of that, um, except the, for the fact there. that Marcus Jackman yeah no 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 Marcus Jackman who was the head station manager at at NPR called me in for a meeting one day and said hey this is what we're doing, um, and I can't remember they had done it one year before a live radio drama, mm -hmm. and he said we want to do we want to do another live radio drama and you know I hear heard you're a good person. Um, to talk to about this and I was I was all in like we were doing a Christmas Carol which is my favorite story I think it's one of the greatest stories ever written sure um and uh yeah I was like yes absolutely I'm sure and then I came in with like okay this I've never done a radio drama before but this is how we're going to do it right um, and you know it's a fantastic experience I got to like we had a live orchestra and we had these custom music cues written and we had a cast of like you know, 15 people and it got simulcast on the PBS affiliates around the state. Like it was, I loved doing it. It was a fantastic experience. Dude. Um, I, I can't actually remember what actually started, like why I got the gig because I'd never <laughs> done one before. Like, and suddenly I'm doing my first one out of the gate is like, you know, it's, it's, it's IPR. It's not like, you know, national IPR, but it, you know, any other public still radio, it's not nothing. It's yeah. professional. Yeah. Yeah, I got paid for it too, which was nice. So. Dude, a, then it was literally professional. Student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, by definition, the, the actors I think were were volunteer, but every you know, the that's okay. I was getting paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I actually have seen footage from this. Really, I have. You were on stage. There's a bunch of people. There's like a mic in the middle. There's oh yeah, yeah. You can see the back everywhere. of my head. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I was like, I think I know whose head that is. <laughs> we, we did um we did uh christmas carol one year and then the indiana um the uh it's wonderful life the next year fantastic was it always your idea to have the orchestra there and like the format the way that it was i think that was somewhat an issue of of knowing the right connections and because he mm -hmm. was the in uh, the ipr station manager he knew the people who could set that up for us um ball state's audio department um and I was going to Ball State University at the time. Their audio department is absolutely stellar. Like they have some excellent people. They have some wonderful equipment. I'm assuming this is all true. I haven't been there in 10 years. <laughs> Maybe it's all gone to crap. That's right. But at the time. <laughs> at the time. No, just absolutely world-class um, world facilities for audio. Some of their other stuff could have used some updating at the time. Once Always. again, I haven't been there Always. in 10 years. I can't, I can't tell you. But um, their audio, their post-production um, side of it was absolutely stellar. So, um, you know, it was a, it was great to be kind of given the keys to the car. Sure. What were rehearsals like for that? 
um, uh, hot because we were doing them <laughs> in the sound rooms. Oh. Um, no, we, we were, yeah. Um, we gathered everybody together and, and we just ran through just like you would a live, um, a kind of a live production, but it was expedited by the fact that everybody had scripts in front of them. Right. Um, so I want to say we did about two or three weeks of rehearsals and, um, I really had to talk Marcus in at the time to more rehearsals and that we're treating this like a live performance. Mm -hmm. Um, And finally he was on, he wasn't objecting to that, but at first it was a little bit off putting, like we're making them come every night. Yes. We're doing a play. Like, (laughs) this is what you do the week before a play. Sure. Um, Yeah. But uh, you know, we got a tremendous response from the community and um, we got some like local newscasters were our narrators and things like that. So it was, it was fantastic. That's cool. Yeah. The first one out the gate, dude, killing it. (laughs) <laughs> right on did so there was no audience in the room at the time it was just no no casting? no there was a, there was a huge audience yeah no no there was an audience it was oh wow that's stressful theater of four or five hundred i mean i don't Ooh. know if it was completely full but uh, yeah the theater sat 500 goodness gracious well good for you do you get nerves not for that yeah i mean i, I get nerves for audience response i don't get like i don't get like oh something's gonna go horribly wrong nerves necessarily like especially if we've been through it like i I feel i feel comfortable you always get a little nervous when you hit send i mean doing stuff now it's totally different though because i'm not looking over at the audience like i'm not live there's no feedback like i'm sending this digital object out into the world and like hopefully in a few days i get some positive notes on a youtube channel or something like there's no uh there's a separation. You know, there's no, there is a separation. So, yeah. uh, okay. you know, I kind of, I kind of miss that live element to it, but sure. you know, obviously, uh, obviously that is what it is. It's part of the format. Sure. It's like you mentioned the different pros and cons of the mediums. Of course. That's wild. So, What do you like to do best? Do you like theater? Do you like film or do you like, you know what? Uh, I like film significantly better than the, it's because, so I did theater growing up. I did like mm-hmm. children's theater, four years of drama in high school and all that stuff. And for me, yeah. I'm naturally soft-spoken. And I find that a majority of the work that I've done has been on camera. So that's what mm-hmm. I learned. And that's what I've been doing for seven and a half years now. So that's yeah. kind of my wheelhouse where I'm comfortable there. I'm really good at it and stuff like that. Whereas theater, even when I was on stage and stuff, the projecting I'm sure just with practice, I could have overcame it, but the projecting, mm-hmm. I couldn't be myself and be real in the moment when I'm like having to lift a cup all the way up, you know, cause you have to play <laughs> to the back row. And I was like, yeah. nobody does this. <laughs> and I love watching theater. I'm a big fan of mm-hmm. being in the audience and watching it, but doing it, I, I actually like the separation. I like that I can make my art and do everything that I do. And then I can just put it out and be like, oh, did you mm-hmm. enjoy that? Cool. Like you're not looking at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've always like I like the separation. I get that. I get that a lot. Yeah. As an actor, which I I don't do often, mm-hmm. but I, you know, I do do. Yeah. Um, as an actor, I'm completely the opposite though. I would rather have a giant house and be playing to the back row and this r- big, big giant raucous comedy with overacting or something like that. Like yeah. that would be my wheelhouse more than uh because I don't like I don't know on film, it's hard to, to me. It's mm-hmm. easier to even hit the emotional beats in that when you're going through every step, every line, everything, and then you get to the emotional scenes than when it's like, okay, cameras are rolling, cry now. Sure. <laughs> and I'm the opposite. I'm very good at that. Like, okay, we need, you got this monologue here. These are the points where you got to break down. I'm like, all right, let's dance. <laughs> different strokes for different folks, I guess. Yeah. No, no, I it totally, totally uh, different, uh, different yeah. perspectives. So. I do find that voiceover is kind of the mesh of the two. Like, I I feel like, I mean, I, I'm sure I've said it before to you, but I, I thank you all the time because World of Tomorrow has been, like, my school for voiceover. And, like, I wish you had dude. a more experienced teacher. I feel, once again, like, I've not done this before. I was I walked in and said, this is how we're going to do it. Like, and it's worked. not having, well, I, I guess so. Like, I guess so. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. People seem to like it. I don't suck and I'm the lead. So that helps. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that does help. I, I have I told you how much I, I lucked out with you and Callie and everyone, but like no. you and Callie especially. 
I have no. I should I, tell you more often how much I yeah. lucked out with you two. I mean, you're both absolutely phenomenal, oh, and you've been sticking it. around. And and on top of that, you're like super flexible with the scheduling and like every right. part of this. And you're enormously talented, and stop you're it. like Cut dedicated, and you do the out. promotion, and like oh, you shouldn't. You should. I, no, no, you. I won't. You are both that. absolutely fantastic. It it helps when you have a good captain. I'll throw it back at you because I've been okay, thank the you. worst. Thank the worst you, movie but... I've ever seen. I'm in it. So I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen my you first know? film. Yeah, so. that's true. I tried. Couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason for that. <laughs> there were, there was about 20 minutes of good content in that 80 minute movie. That's incredible. <laughs> I do find though that with voiceover. So I feel like I just recently sort of cracked the code for it because it is a lot of it is cranked up to 11 with the character stuff. And you have to convey mm -hmm. all of these things through just your voice. So I'm like, okay, I'm used to nuance and being able to like move my head in a way and like squint my eyes in a way to convey emotion. I have none of mm -hmm. that to rely on. Um, and I feel like I'm getting it. And a lot of that is through practice and through good writing and through direction. So world of tomorrow is a thing I tout all the time, especially now that, you know, when COVID hit, everything shut down. So I was yeah. like, okay, I'm going to really lean into this voiceover stuff. And World of Tomorrow was that vehicle, like my training ground. And you have way too much trust in me because <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this was my first voiceover role I ever got was Tim. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first time. I mean, I, I assume because you already had the setup, like part of it is I was, you know, since we're recording all remotely, everybody's got to have a decent setup. Right. And so that yeah, was part sure. of the and like I kind of not judged people based on their setup but you could tell who was really into voiceover because they had a good one and you like had a great one and so i kind of thought oh he knows what he's doing yeah. he's done a lot of voiceover <laughs> before because he's got yep. the good setup right that was from the podcast i cheated okay yeah you I, did because i've been doing the podcast for just just this september it was six years wow so i'd been podcasting for like three three four years by the time that audition came around and then okay. I had three or four years of acting experience on camera as well. So I knew mm -hmm. that I could act and then I had a mic and it was just figuring that out. You know, so I mean? how'd you even hear about the audition where you like, I don't even remember how you first contacted me. You know what? I've been thinking about that all week. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it had to have been either like backstage or one of those. Cause I was on yeah. backstage. Here's what I remember about it. I remember that I sent in the audition and I remember that I was in San Francisco right after I sent it in. And you were mm -hmm. like, yeah, could you, can you get this recording to me soon? And I was in San Francisco. I was like, I don't have my stuff. I'll do my best to get it when I get back. And I was yeah. like, oh God, this is a lead role. I think I might've lost it. And you were like, okay, just let me know when you get back. And I remember thinking, I was, I distinctly, I can close my eyes and see it being in the hotel room with my wife after a day of just traveling and stuff. And I was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I think I might be in the running for this. Cause I was like, why would he wait for me? <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember I got back and I got sick. So it took another couple days and you're like, uh -huh. no, no, it's fine. Just whenever you get a chance. And I was like, who does this? Who's <laughs> I feel like I might, I must've done something. Okay. For you to be like, you know, yeah, we can, we can wait for you to send in a thing. I was like, what? Is you happening? are you're also assuming i am way more put together than i actually yeah. am. like <laughs> that's a good point that's a good you point. gotta remember i'm doing this like there's no there's no like business there's no like company there's not like a bunch of people sitting around in a boardroom somewhere it's literally me in my basement sure so, all the best things no, but, are i find <laughs> but i do you now that now that you're saying that i do kind of remember that we did wait for your audition but it wasn't a big deal it's like crazy. we were still, we were, because we were still balancing out other cast members and, and ultimately everyone we called back for Tim. And I think, I think I can say this. Everyone we called back for Tim wound up in the cast. It wasn't oh, like there was. Interesting. Because, because we had other, we had a bunch of other roles to fill. And we knew that once, if we liked you for Tim, if you were that level of, of actor, we would find a place for you. So okay. yeah. Yeah. A, a lot of people got called back were, you know, had other, um, you know, had had other roles that they they fell into. I had no idea. Interesting. And here we are. Yeah. Years yeah. later. Here we are. I do have a kind of serious question for you, though, that I've been sure. wanting to ask for quite some time. In your opinion, do you think 
chopsticks or sticky rice came first? This is a this is a real question that you found from a cooking show that I did. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is, Ben. This is what I do. <laughs> I, did I watch the entire episode? They... You're damn right I did. Oh, I'm so <laughs> embarrassed by that. It's actually not bad at all. I made way worse. It stuff. aired once. It aired once. I actually learned something, Ben. Thank you. I thought I yeah. could be Alton Brown, and that was just a, a horrible uh, no, mistake you were on my Lancaster, part. Lancaster, which in a lot of ways is better. That's fair. <laughs> um, how did you find all this? Like, I'm really this is, curious. This is who I am, Ben. I got to go pull stuff down from YouTube, apparently. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, I would probably suggest that they, they came side by side and that the chopsticks and um, mm. reinforced the fact that the rice needed to be, um, to be uh, cultivated in a way that made it stick together more. And then that reinforced the use of the chopsticks. So I'd say the chopsticks were there and then the rice got stickier would be my guess, but I'm not, I'm not a cultural anthropologist. So me neither. So I'm going to take your answer as fact and I will die on this hill with you. Okay. I agree. That makes sense to me that when I was, when I was watching that, actually, I was like, this is fun. It was really fun. Some of the jokes you made were hilarious. I was like, ah, Ben. And then (laughs) (laughs) I also think, You have taught me so many things in the last three years, specifically words (laughs) and phrases. (laughs) And I was watching this video and it's from like over a decade ago, from like 11 years ago. And I remember watching and be like, oh yeah, there's Ben. Look at that. I'm learning about rice. This is crazy. (laughs) Did I think, did I think I was going to watch a cooking show? Absolutely. Did I think I was going to learn while doing it? No. And there were puppets. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, it's like we were destined to be friends. This is great. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that decade old show that aired once at two 30 in the morning Dog entertained takes. you. It was a lot of fun. I I'm a, I'm, I'm easy to please. <laughs> and you did You did a good job. Ooh, I have a question. Did it hurt to pierce your eyebrow? Um, no, the clamp hurts more than the needle. So they, they take this clamp with a, um, and it's got a, uh, it's, it's like, I can't, it's got a clamp with a hole on both sides. I don't know if I'm describing okay, this. Yeah, makes I've, excellent I've seen those before. They, they're kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah. scissors, but with a little loop at the top. Yeah, but it's, it's more of a, it's, it's a, it's a tension clamp. It's not quite scissors, but I guess it is right, on right. hinge. So I it's being held there on its own. And mm. that hurts much more than the needle going through. The needle going through is not bad. I've actually uh, pierced my eyebrow twice now. So what? same place, something of an expert. Yeah, you know, same place. Um, I took uh, it out one time and it healed up. Um, it actually fell out when I was at the beach one time on vacation and couldn't get oh, it no. redone. And so I had to wait like three months or something for the wound to sort of heal and then get it redone. So, uh, did it hurt worse the second time or the first time? Um, I think I just knew what to expect the second time. I'm not sure there was any mm. real difference in the level. Makes sense. And the guy, Makes I think sense. the guy knew a little bit more what he was doing the second time. The first time I got it done, like at a place that kind of did spas and belly buttons. And the second time was a tattoo artist. And he's like, I think he knew what he was doing as far as facial stuff more. There you go. It looks really cool. I I appreciate that. Because I also realized we've never talked face to face. (laughs) No, we've never met each other. IRL as the kids. That's right. We're we're just voices through an Mm -hmm. internet connection. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah, we ever even talked on Zoom in a way that we've seen each other? Like that might need, that might no. even be the next step for us. I don't think we have. Okay. I think that will kick our relationship off. I do. Yeah. I feel like that's the next level. Mm, definitely. Yeah. But I didn't, I never realized that. And I was like, you're even cooler than I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> did you not know I had the eyebrow ring? Was that the- I did not. No, I had no oh. idea. Yeah. Because like, you weren't, were you in Walt's Frozen Head? Uh, very briefly. Okay. And I took it out for that. And I took it, yeah, Got I took it, it out for okay, that. Okay, see? Disney employees can't, I, I was playing a Disney employee. Disney employees can't, uh, couldn't at the time. I don't know about now. Good they point. Yeah. Good point. I've also seen that. It's very good. I told you that when it happened. I think, oh, season, thank you. I think season one-ish. Yeah, I think you told me at the very beginning, but I, I can't trust anybody, anything anyone says at the very <laughs> beginning, right? Like, that's not good an point. accurate representation of your actual feelings towards things. You are I, absolutely At this point, right. I trust you. You'd, you'd probably tell me if it's, it's fine. Yeah, I would. <laughs> No, I like that one. I still, I still really do like it. You should. Like there it's were things, good. there were things I, there were things I could have done better. And, Always. and that's true of everything. Mm-hmm. And there are things that just having money would have, would have done better. For sure. But mostly I really like it. You should. 
You should. It's very good. I'd love to redo the sound mix sometime. That's the one thing that kind of bugs mm. me because I did the sound mix. Gotcha. I, if I if I like if suddenly like a few thousand ten thousand dollars dropped in my lap, I'd have someone professional to redo the sound mix, but probably not. That's usually happen, the so. the Achilles heel of indie film. I found. Yeah. Yeah. First well, movie I was in. Same we, thing. Yeah, I think we got good set. Like we captured good sound for the mm-hmm. the times. I, I think it was the the actual mixing and and it was purely my fault because yeah it was it was me being inexperienced and and not right. a sound mixer how much of that was adr all the shots with everything with them in the parks was adr wow did yeah. that take a while was... adr sucks i see i don't mind adr yeah oh, i would I st- i've done it like three times and it's really so hard yeah mm. just matching it I'm like mm. yeah you gotta it's you've almost got to just a bad it, it almost becomes a technical exercise at that point yeah to like just sort of match just like get into the flow and say the things and the same to, so over and over and and like words lose all meaning and syllables yeah. break down into their <laughs> base components and time stands still and you know um yeah yeah and th- that was that was somebody from Valencia College whose name escapes me at the moment who uh, we hired for who we found and who did that for us all the ADR work so we did it at Valencia Studios so. nice mm-hmm. how did you decide because I- I'm always curious as someone who has worked on features as well as shorts when you mm-hmm. first came up with the idea for the further adventures of Walt's frozen head was it always a feature yes because I was wow. in the program that made you made the feature. I mean, that it was, oh, it was part gotcha. of that, right? Like, and so I had this other feature. It was fine. It was going to be good. I might do something with the story someday because I still kind of like it. You should. Um, yeah. It would actually make a really good audio drama. So oh. maybe I'll come around to that. I yeah. know a guy. <laughs> I got, I'm doing this one now. This one, it, they're honestly pretty similar in their tone. They're different okay. stories, but similar in their tone. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it was always it was always a feature, um, it, and I always knew it was going to be a short feature, right? Like, so we're we're sure. scraping it into at ninety minutes or at eighty minutes, right? Like, Got we're it. not a, right not at a the two bar. hour thing. Yeah, yeah, right at the bar. Um, I actually had a film festival say this would be great if it was forty minutes shorter. I'm like, you really want a forty minute short? Like, that's what you want? <laughs> How do you program a forty minute? Nobody wants I've that. Always, no one wants that. No. It's like, well, if you cut a little, yeah, okay. It's fifteen minutes, and then it's eighty. There's yeah. no in betweens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can't make that a 15 minute movie. That's a dumb 15 minute movie, right? Because right. the, the, the things that you have to do are going to just like the things that you have to do that are just expected are going to yeah. fill up that 15 minutes, right? Yeah. Like you sure. got to talk the thing into the thing. You got to talk, they got to go do the funny thing and then they mm-hmm. got to sneak in and then they see the things. That's what yep. you got to do. That's 15 minutes. Yeah. And then you got to give them something more on top of that. And that's why that's what pushes it into that territory where I think it's got to be a feature. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I just realized for people that don't know, what's what's what are we talking about? <laughs> Further Adventures of Walt's Frozen Head. Yes. Uh, which is a feature film. Yeah. Feature comedy. Now we know uh, why. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was shot partially at Walt Disney World without permission, and uh, Good features man. the uh, Ron Schneider as, uh, who was the original dream finder and took over for Wally Bogue at Disneyland and has this long history and, and connection with theme parks as Walt, or at least his head, which exists in a, in a kind of a jar contraption that is carried uh-huh. around by the protagonist, Peter, who is a low level theme park employee who winds up kidnapping the frozen head of Walt to go take him and show him the park for the very first time. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's been a long good. time since I pitched that movie. Like my pitch is a little rusty. That was good though. That's exactly yeah, what the I'll movie's try. about. And then there's 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 drama amidst family. There's relationships yeah. happening. There. Yeah. Also, dude, talk about going in the deep end for a feature to take place in a theme park, and then to have a head. That sounds like you just wanted to make things very difficult for yourself. Was it easier or more difficult than you expected when you actually did it? We we lucked out incredibly in the in just randomly finding our visual effects artist who did every single shot in the movie to absolute perfection, uh, and it was it was a friend of a friend situation. And perfect. I met him and I said, "Do you want to work on this project?" And he was like, "Sure." 
I have four kids, so it's going to have to be exclusively in the evening, but I stay up late, so that's not a problem. Fantastic. And then months later, he's still on this project, giving me like his time and effort. Um, and uh, yeah, it like all wow. props to him. And uh, all he got really in thanks was the trophy that we won at one film festival for best visual effects that we sent. To Get him, it. So. <laughs> So wow. I, you know, I, I should, I should reach out to him to see how he's doing, but uh, yeah. That's nuts. Mm -hmm. How did you, how did you do that? How, how was Walt brought to life? I assume there was some green screen type stuff going on where you shot Walt separately. Yes. Yes. We didn't, we hadn't, we had not cast Ron at that point. Um, we had actually what? reached out to a few people. We were looking at kind of older, uh, obviously older actors um, who, right. who had some, either had some connection with the Disney company, but, but we were, we, you know, we kind of worked our way up the chain and, and saw who maybe Hollywoodish actors would be interested. And we got, mm -hmm. we got a bunch of no's. We got a few maybes. We got a few, your price is way too highs. Um, mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, we wound up with, um, with Ron who just absolutely knocked it out of the park. Like, yeah not only and partially like just the built-in knowledge that he had of the company and of walt and the the transformation he put himself under um to to really take that on um i mean i think he did better than tom hanks uh, as far as like transforming into somebody who feels like that uncle walt character right um, you know that that might be my personal bias but uh that's but okay it, yeah, it's still my personal bias so i, I think he just did a phenomenal <laughs> job um, but that was shot a year after we had wrapped production on everything else. No way. You shot the yes. whole thing without. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. So it was, it was people off screen reading. And, and I mean, that's a huge credit to Daniel because Daniel was acting against whatever script supervisor we had pulled in at the moment. Um, yeah. reading in a deadpan off camera. Wow. Good for him. Um, but what it really did was it really sped up a lot of our production time because we only had to worry about getting one actors, right? Like you don't need to oh, shoot point. all your rehearsals. Sure. Um, so whenever we had, and, and there were a few shots I know we absolutely needed. We needed the shot of Walt actually being carried um, under the arm. We tried to do that as little as possible, but we needed a few of them. And those were the trickiest visual effects shots because um, mm -hmm. that involved motion tracking. Um, you know, so we we did a few things here and there to kind of limit the number of visual effects shots there were still a you know, few like 300 visual effects shots in that <laughs> film so wow um, yeah it was still a challenge and and then you know getting uh, getting the compositing and the everything but you know at the end of the day we have a you know if nothing else we got a gimmick and i'm a big believer that like in the Roger Corman, you gotta you gotta fulfill the promise of the title. And if yep. the promise of the title is Attack of the Crab People, I want to see those crab people, and I want to see them attack at least yeah. three <laughs> times. There's got to be three crab people attacks in this That's right. movie. That's right. So yeah, so if we you know we start the film, the further adventures of Walt's frozen head on the two minute mark, the camera dollies in. You're seeing Walt's head. The little garage doors open, and there he is. We are there not he is. you know cheating you. Right, right. You this box has 40 been minutes checked. of frozen head. Yes. <laughs> man, that's crazy. I had no idea. So much fell into place for this movie. Um, oh, man, how'd you shoot in the park? Uh, sneaky sneakies. Um, My man. We <laughs> divided up all the equipment and we were lucky because the Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema camera had just come out at that time. Ah, fantastic. Um, fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. We couldn't have done it without that. And um, the A7S, the Sony that shoots incredible in low light, gave us a mm -hmm. lot of footage that we could use of attractions and things like that. Um, Smart. So it was it was a lot of sneaking around, a lot of text messages. Um, we used a monopod instead of a tripod um, so that we could get um, places without being too um, ostentatious. Um, Smart. And then it, we almost got caught once or twice. But uh, we, what we happened? Managed Okay, so it's it, the very first shot, very first day. Perfect. And Daniel is going through the turnstile. And it's just this wide yes. shot of Daniel going through the turnstile. And we're going to cut it in with a few close-ups, right? Not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Watching him go through the turnstile. The trouble is, Daniel is a local actor. Uh -huh. The person who is, uh, they don't take tickets there, but, you know, whatever the, the, the appropriate. Sure. The guard. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not a guard, right? It's just a person standing <laughs> right. there watching you scan your thing. Sure. He recognizes Daniel. 
They've apparently oh. worked together. Daniel has no knowledge of this kid. Like this kid was like <laughs> second lighting assistant or whatever sure. on some show that Daniel was in. I'm sure he, I'm sure he kind of maybe would have recognized him if he spent long enough, but right. like recognizes Daniel and starts engaging him in this long conversation and then looks over and sees the camera filming Daniel going into this park <laughs> with this large bag around his shoulder um uh, <laughs> so, like that was our closest and this was shot number one like this right. was right at the wow. beginning it was pretty smooth sailing after that daniel came up with a cover story we we're wondering what's going on and at that point we've put out the like scatter notification because you know we're all in this text chain we've got the right. scatter notification and like we had we had this down where we were like actually dumping footage in the middle of the day so we Smart. would have yeah we, yeah we had like as soon as the scene was done, we handed the cards off to someone um, else who knew, who kind of hung around, but also knew they were, you know, where they were headed and we had our recon points and things like that. So um, oh. yeah, it was a, it was a military operation almost. We went in there, we scouted out, we knew where every shot was. Um, at that point, the Minecraft servers were pretty popular with, mm. for the Disney Minecraft servers who had rebuilt the park there. So we had those pulled up in our rehearsal space and walking through exactly the layout of the, of where we're shooting and what shots we were getting. Um, Dude. Yeah. Then this was an extensive document before we started filming and we filmed every bit of park footage we needed before we even announced the first Kickstarter um, because Smart. we knew we needed that park footage. Then we can go public. Right. With what we did. So. Wow. How many days did you shoot in the park? Um, I mean, we, since we had such a long rehearsal time, I think we got it down to four days in the park of primary footage. And then we went wow. back later for one other day that we just kind of did on the DL. Sure. And then the rest, I assume you cheated locations. Yeah. 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 There was, there was a lot of cheating locations. Like we shot nice. it. Um, I don't know how well, you know, Orlando. Um, not we well. Should, yeah. We shot. <laughs> okay. There's, there's a mall we shot at for the utility okay. doors, like all their back stuff and cool uh, we got a few other locations um the power plant or the water cooling plant at ucf let us shoot for a lot of the kind of large industrial locations and, oh neat um, we shot at a brewery for the cryogenics lab so it was a uh, it was a good makes sense uh, yeah yeah so that was that was i mean that took three or four weeks then after we shot the four days of park footage right because you just don't go as fast when you're not shooting gorilla so yeah yeah <laughs> when you're not in uh, danger of getting caught yeah yeah it's wow. like oh, i'll take one more take I'll, I'll get one more take yeah let's do a fun one <laughs> yeah let's do a fun one <laughs> have you always been this organized i see i don't think i'm organized i don't i don't see myself as organized do you think i'm organized i think you have the systems in place that are organized i have know? to force myself to do that though like yeah. that's it that is that is to me that's not a natural strength that's like what I do in order to get to the parts I like, you know? Gotcha. Okay. Okay. You're like eyes on the prize, but you lay the track correctly beforehand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. And to I me, to me, that. the, like the production, the production is, is the worst part of filmmaking. Like the, the. Oh, really? Okay. To, on set. Cause right. on set is so stressful about making your day, about getting what you, Good point. that's what you get. And that's when you're spending the money and that's when you, and that's what it's really hard to redo on an indie level. I think Good it would point. be less stressful on a on a bigger film, even though you got more whatever going on. Like at the end of the day, you know you're doing some reshoots, right? Like sure. if you're directing a Marvel movie, you got a third of your budget set aside to reshoot whatever you want. Right. So I don't know that it's less stressful for a, on a, on a production that size, but I, I yeah. would assume it would have to be because, like, I know if this if the guy who runs the brewery comes out and says, "Ah, like you got to leave now." we got to pack up, right? Like there's right. no arguing with the guy. Yeah. We, good uh, point. You know, and, and especially if you get caught, you know, like in the park, like then you're really SOL. Yeah. For real. Yikes. That's nuts though. And you shot it in the park. So then Walt's stuff, where was his stuff shot? Uh, UCF sound, sound stages. Nice. That's mm -hmm. cool. How long, how, how many days did you have him for? I want to say three. I'd have nice. to go back and actually check, but yeah, he, um, it was, it, but that was a really quick shot shoot too, because like we were literally just getting only what we needed. Um, right. you know, we, we, at that point had the entire film edited together, mm -hmm. um, 
with with the the knowledge that we we're going to have to adjust some timing, um, but that right. we had all the shots laid in um, as far as where they were going, and so we knew like okay, we need this shot of Walt, and we did that shot, and you know lined up the thing exactly, and it was all eyeballed, like one hundred percent eyeballing. Wow, yeah, so. mm-hmm. dude, that's wild. So from the mm-hmm. time that you decided we're going to make this feature to when it came out, how much time had elapsed? Four years. Four years. Really? Yeah. How about yeah. day one of shooting to release? Oh, uh, at least two. Yeah, I'd say two or three years then from day one. Wow. Of shooting. That's crazy. Good for you for finishing it. <laughs> that's so but like it's did not finished the- for anyone that's done anything indie it is such a big deal to finish anything and that, like, that is true i will agree with that to finish not only a feature but to finish it after that much time to keep the steam of like we're doing this for years what i can tell you is get people who will be horribly disappointed if the project gets canceled. I don't care who that has to be for you, but get people yeah. who are just going to like never speak to you again if that movie right. doesn't come out. Like let the fear of failure motivate you. Yeah. Cuz when you're tired and you don't want to go work on that sound effect again for the 12th night, that's sure. what's going to keep you, you know. <laughs> be afraid of failure. That's right. That's right. Put the fire there yourself. Mm-hmm. I respect that. I respect that. And I that. was finishing this remote. Like I wasn't living in Orlando when we were really doing the, the finishing. So I was doing a lot of it digitally. Really? Which now doesn't seem like a big deal, but seemed much but more like time. a big deal back then. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Had you So I've learned through World of Tomorrow that there is definitely a like behind the scenes Disney fandom. Mm, oh yeah, 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 definitely. I've learned this uh, because you have to constantly explain references to me uh, when we record, and then I talk to people like John, and I'm like, "Oh, this is like a real thing that I am outside of." Okay, got oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. John, I mean, th- that's what John does. He is a, you know, he goes to the park and he live streams and he writes reviews and uh, like he's, he, I think that's he's got so some cool. some side hustles on the top of that, but like this is what he does, and you know, wow. It, it, good like i'm glad that they, that kind of fan industry exists for that and you know it exists for other things too right it's not just oh absolutely you know, there are different versions of that for whatever your interest is i'm sure there's a wrestling version of that with fans Definitely. and podcasts and like the whole infrastructure of it and you know whatever you're into like find the find those people though you know find the find your people who like the things you do and make friends I totally agree. Did you know that that was there before making Walt's Frozen Head? Like, were you in the in the globe? I wasn't in the group, okay. um, but I knew that it was there. And okay. I realized at, at, when I started the project, I realized that the way I was going to to be successful at the fundraising, which was going to be essential because I didn't have the the out of you know it, we didn't spend much on the movie, but I didn't sure. have the, the cash to put it out myself. Totally. Um, so I knew the, the way that I was going to do that was I needed to get in in a way that was provable before I announced this thing. Smart. And so I started the Walt's Frozen Head Twitter account in September when we weren't even announcing this thing until April. Ah, good man. So I had like built up at least those few months of kind of goodwill, community, whatever, like this, that, and the other. And then I got touring plans blog um, to like it, the timing just worked out where I was writing a guest little thing for them. It wasn't even a full article. It was a portion of an article. And then sure. at the end, they said, you know, Benjamin Lancaster, the person behind Walt's frozen head and the writer director of, and like, it was just this little thing that dropped yeah. and like, suddenly that's a thing. And then we could like, like we, uh-huh. we, we timed it out really well that like, there's a person behind this account that person is making a movie that movie that you know that's coming here and then suddenly we got all the podcasts to book me to promote the the film so it, you know and to promote the kickstarter really that's what we were trying to promote. right um interesting see there's that forward thinking again there's all that planning yeah you know, it, you, know you, you gotta you gotta start with one step in front of the other right yeah yeah i agree so after doing features and you've worked in radio before where did world of tomorrow come from um 
so I've always been really interested in the like what would have happened with the concept of Walt building Epcot as the as the city of the future. Like this was his plan. This was his dream. This is what he sold the Florida legislator on that gave him the um, rights to do whatever they want to, which oh. is like legitimately shocking. Yeah. Um, that like they I don't know if you know this. The Disney company has the right to build a nuclear power plant what like no. they could start construction tomorrow <laughs> oh no <laughs> yes whatever wow. they want dude um yeah so like a lot of the stuff in, in prototype world of tomorrow it, like it's exaggerated but a lot of it's really based on what they were doing and you know i've just done a ton of digging into like the thought process and who Walt was reading at the time, which there's right. some crazy stuff in the 1960s about what they thought the future was going to be like, just like absolutely utopian thinking. Some of it's just like really dystopian thinking. Um, <laughs> well, people don't need privacy. Why would people need privacy? Who needs it? Exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, a lot of it was wrapped up in this American, we've got to beat the Soviets uh, uh, sentiment, um, you know, and, and so like, it's just, it's just been this wild place that I've never been allowed to visit. And so I kind of wanted to build a version of it for myself, um, yeah, you, know, which, you know, if nothing else, I get to, I get to have this little area that I play in, um, you know, and I get to come out with a new story in it every few months. And uh, I, I wish I could come out with them more often, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Takes time and effort though. <laughs> it does. Uh, yeah. Oh, especially because it's not my, like I got a day job and the day job requires me to do things and show up, right? And, you know, take meetings and things gets in right. the way of this. Was it always going to be the audio format? Yeah. Always. There's no way to cool. film this. I mean, without yeah. huge, millions massive <laughs> budget. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're, you're talking, you're not even talking about a basic cable show. You're talking about just, it all takes place in this futuristic city. Everything has to be immaculately designed and it's all got to be complicated and you couldn't do it on, on any sort of budget that would be realistic for anything but a premier streaming service or something. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. But if Disney Plus wants to talk, <laughs> just throw all that out there. That's right. I'll, I'll, I'll call some people. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, so I, being outside of the bubble, I did not know anything other, like i know epcot is a theme park i've never been yes um R really i know i know i've only been to magic is kingdom it... once okay. i know okay. i know been to magic kingdom once i've been to animal kingdom once i've been to hollywood studios i think twice mm -hmm. that's, and, that's the wrong uh, <laughs> you're going backwards Go. that's the one that's the one with star wars man <laughs> that's true Have you, so you've and, been to galaxy's edge I have not because COVID hit and oh, then I yeah, got yeah, yeah. super busy right when it happened. And I've been like mm -hmm. working on a, too many projects. Um, you need so to just, go to galaxy's edge though. Like, I know I want, especially for me, like, I know I'm going to cry. I'm just going to see yeah, yeah, the yeah. real Falcon and just have an experience. But also I've, I've had, ex I've had the chance to, but my wife was working all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to experience this with you. You know, you're married. I you get, get it. it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. And uh, so I was figuring that out. So I think, what am I missing? What's the other one? Am I missing one? There's Magic Kingdom. Uh, the Ep no, there's four. There's four. So, okay. And, and a couple I, water parks. Got it. Okay. I've been to Blizzard Beach. Mm -hmm. I've been, been to that one. But yeah, I haven't been to Epcot. That's the one that I haven't been to yet. And I've always wanted to, especially for like the food and wine drinking stuff. Yeah. If you don't have beers from around the world and get drunk mm -hmm. at Disney. It'd be awesome. Yeah, great. So, it's great. Make small world much better. Uh, exactly. I bet. Makes it palatable. Uh, so I, <laughs> so yeah. I didn't know that Epcot was supposed to be a real city until this, and then the amount of thought and like people I've I've seen reviews online of people who like really know what you're talking about, and me not knowing where you have to explain these things to me while we're recording, it's been really cool to kind of see this ecosystem I didn't know existed and like oh this is like a a thing thing, this is cool. And I, re I really enjoyed that. So I don't know if you know this. How, who is on the show, is the host how, huh? of of the best history podcast uh, on on Disney. The just hands down the best. And I've actually seen references to him to his podcast and like other things. Like he is. It is really the amount of research. They only come up with like one episode a month, 
And sure. they're like two and a half hours. And the amount of research, Ooh. they'll do like four episodes, four two hour episodes on a single attraction or something like Goodness that. Goodness gracious. So the real problem you're going you're gonna to run into is Epcot of all the parks has just been completely torn down and rebuilt in, in ways that uh, like make everyone sad. Everyone gotcha. who like experiences as a child. Like there's no way, unless we, unless we get that time travel technology Sure. Um, you're not visiting the same park that I visited at five and seven. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It's it's okay. It's, it's just shame, but like I wish I wish you could like I wish you yeah. could all experience what I experienced when I was a kid. Sure. Um, unfortunately, it's just it's not there anymore. Parts oh. of like little bits here and there, but like every right. pretty much every ride's been replaced at this point. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, as a Disney fan, then, what's your favorite Disney movie? Hmm, favorite Disney movie. I think Mary Poppins is probably Ooh, yeah, I think good that's one. I mean, there's so much like history and background and stuff that goes into that too, right? You can't just pick sure. like your favorite movie. It's got to be something totally that, like. Well, I'll give you two if the... you want it. Oh no, no, no! I don't got. A, I don't have another one. I'll tell okay. you Mary Poppins. Okay, okay, Mary, that's a great one. You can't go wrong with Penguin Waiters. Mm-hmm. Dick Van Dyke. I'm in. And how? And how? Like deep the movie is on some level like it ends with like this chimney sweep talking about talking to a a man who's having a crisis of faith about his parenting like yeah (laughs) it's like wasn't this a fun movie about kids and a nanny no it's about the dad it's about the dad who's trapped in a bank and like Um, has to yeah so there's layers there's layers do you have a favorite disney character Mm, i mean uh, figment yeah. Like. Ooh. Oh. Uh, you know what? I'm what? seeing a thread here. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Figment's the dragon, the little purple dragon. Figment's the purple dragon. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Did not and, know that the, was a thing tr- until this year. Yeah. The trouble <laughs> is, Figment used to be this like little magical dragon, and then they redid the ride, and they brought uh... in Eric Idle, and now he's like this really annoying little <laughs> no. sort of a character oh no it's the worst <laughs> what's like, your favorite ride farts on you oh no yeah he literally like they, they took this like charming little like like it comes and farts on you <laughs> like thanks that's, guys that's a choice thanks, Eric Idle. yeah it is yeah. a choice <laughs> okay okay do you have a favorite ride uh i mean then we're talking about currently existing or all time because all time it, and it's it's journey into imagination. Like I okay okay. I have it. It's a weird thing because if you rode that ride at the right age and you were the right kind of kid, you uh-huh. didn't forget it. Like uh... you just didn't. Like I rode this ride twice when I was a, twice, and I can like remember it scene by scene. Wow. Like, you can't. And it was a twelve minute ride that took you through the it's a psychedelic trip man <laughs> like, right. I, right i can't even just there there's no words for what the weird imagery and the thing and the like they've never built something like this like, we sure never built. <laughs> like and it's this person inviting you to experience the inner depths of your soul and like taking you through it and like sure it's crazy, it's crazy. wow i see another thread here all right all right <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take you to like when you started okay when you decided i'm making prototype world of tomorrow how long did that writing process take oh man it went through so many different versions too like tim was a very different character in the first version really um, and it just didn't work and i kept banging my head like it was basically blade runner it was basically a comic okay. version of blade runner at the beginning and it was this more much more harrison ford character and and it was going to be like, he's kind of the tough, logical one. And like Eve is sort of the, uh, you know, she can, she can get her way and she can make friends and she can do like, and that's how it was going to be. And like Eve was basically Annie, you know, in, in more gotcha. than she was friendly and okay. people liked her. And like, um, and then I, someone told me like, you know, you got these it, it completely backwards. Like Tim, it, we're, <laughs> we're, we're in Tim's head. Tim has to be this other kind of character. And it's like, yeah, you're right. So I went back to the very beginning, started plotting the whole first episode out again. Um, yeah, and here we are. Interesting. How long did it take to cast? I mean, that went quicker. Once I actually yeah. had the scripts done, then the train started moving. Um, 
you know, it, it, it didn't take long for us to find the people because I basically posted 12 places all at once and we gotcha. started getting people coming in. I was just, and I was saying like, okay, I'm fighting the, the, I'm fighting the battle with the army that's showing up. Right. You know, I'm not right. going to, I'm sure. not going to keep waiting for the mythical perfect cast. Like I'm going to see who shows up and pick the pick up from that. Sure. So that was the strategy there. Makes sense. And then Callie showed up and you're like, what? The warrior of legend that will help us win the war? <laughs> uh, I mean, that yes, absolutely. Was there a role that you found having made audio dramas and also having these sounds in my head and I know what I want them to sound like, was there a role that was particularly difficult to cast? Uh, not particularly. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, I can't think of one in, in particular that was that was a challenge. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, this last time we had the German scientist in, in one of the seasons, right. that was, we just had to find somebody who could do it. And that sure. was a challenge and it, was sort, it sort of wound up being a friend of a friend. Um, cool. But, uh, yeah, it, I, I can't think of one particular. We've got a Russian next season I need. So if anyone does that. Sweet. I'm, I'm out of it. I, I'm me. We've been over this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything, because you'd worked in radio and stuff before, was there anything that like you learned from season one that like you were surprised at like, oh, well, this was different than I expected? Um. I mean, in the writing process, I'm constantly surprised by, I can't do the little, it's the little acting things you're talking about, right? Like I, gotcha. those beats don't work. And sure. I think season one had more of them where I was just kind of like, oh yeah. And then the people realize that something funny is happening. Like then Tim smirks. <laughs> Wait, what? Right. No, no, Tim cannot smirk. Like that, right. doesn't, that doesn't work in radio. Right. Um, so it, it is occasionally challenging, especially doing sort of semi-action-y things. I mean, there's never like real action, right? But sure. semi-action-y running around things, you got to plot out what you can actually see here and, and especially words that people can say to tell you what's going on. What is, out of, out of that, what is your favorite part of the process when it comes to like this particular format? Having done it. Yeah. Like, that's no, that's always my favorite part. I like having done yeah. it. I like having a comp. I like having written. I like having edited. I like having produced it. But you guys are sure. so much fun. Like really, no, you guys, I just come out. No, 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 no. No, it is Recording true. I'm sessions, really I come out buzzed. <laughs> yeah. Like I honestly, I kind of wish we could spend more time just joking around sometimes, but you know, Agreed. it's great. Like I love doing it. But I know we also want to get stuff done too, right? Like that's I want to respect everyone's time. So that is true. You do have to wrangle us pretty yeah. often. And by us, I mean me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it easier because you like having written it all? Is there a particular part like writing versus editing? Is one of them three seasons in, has it gotten easier or is it still its own kind of monster? I uh, No, I've like editing to me is pretty technical because I'm not doing the final version. I'm basically cool. picking out takes, placing gotcha. them. And then picking like music cues and things like that. And then making notes of where sound effects are going to go. And then Smart. I send that off to the mixer. I, I, I mean, you could call them and I, I don't even know how you would de delineate those two tasks necessarily, right. but Foley artist. And then he does the, the final mix and sends it back. So that's, that's sort of the process. Um, I mean, oh, to okay. me, the editing is, is winds up being the most technical process and also mm -hmm kind of the least creative sometimes i'll wind up moving some some lines around or something like that um but mostly it's a pretty technical process but then i'm just listening for okay take one take two take three take two is the best move it into the pile okay right take one take two take three take three is the best move it into the pile and then sort it all out for, and for timing gotcha okay okay i will uh, say that the, the biggest challenge that i run into is getting you guys to do things together in a way that feels organic and that's just purely a technical issue um interesting you know, well it's you you have a different conversational dynamic when you're sitting across from each other and i think you can pull right. off those kind of back and forth banters mm -hmm. which occasionally fall a little flat i i feel and maybe i'm just being overly critical sure um but yeah i i wish we could get a few more the, like i think if everyone was sitting at a table those would be magic gold and we just pull a pull a full take in right, right. okay and i see what you, you mean. know i'm trying to kind of create them in in post is sort of sort of never feels completely organic 
Right. And Frankensteining takes where you got like take one of this person and then take three of this person and make yeah. it seem like, yeah, I've been there. How did you come up with the idea of wrangling clouds? I don't remember. I like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, uh, we're doing something about weather, I guess. It's like, yeah, uh, weather, that sounds weather, right. we weather. Yeah. Um, I that was a really no cool idea. idea. I, I like the I I liked the visualizations of just storm clouds in like a dog pound. It was, <laughs> it was just neat. I I enjoyed it. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I like I gen, I'm genuinely super proud to be a part of World of Tomorrow. I think it's so I'm fun. I, I like your writing style, even though it's a it's a a feat to say those words sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like I have to earn every monologue, but I do enjoy it a lot. It's so fun. Well, I, and, and I will tell you too, that I like Tim speaks in a vocabulary that is beyond my grasp and that I wouldn't like, I don't use words that complicated on a regular basis, but I also kind of feel like it's one of those shows. I hope people feel a little smarter after listening to it instead. Like I don't want it to talk down to people, but I do want it to be in that way that like Archer and other shows will just throw out this obscure reference that yeah. <laughs> if you've got Wikipedia pulled up, you can look up real quickly and think, oh, like I didn't know that, but like now I do. So yeah, it works for me. Oh, There's, good, I mean, good. how many times have you had to send me pronunciations of words? <laughs> <laughs> but I would have to look up those same pronunciations too, right? right. Like we're learning I think together. this season, yeah, you see you, like the the Mah- uh, Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy or something like that. I'm not yes. this thing. I may, may have seen it written once, but like, okay, I looked yeah. it up, pulled the Wikipedia, dropped in the script. Like, okay, I, c- I get how to use it in the sentence and yep. then I can move on. Like, I, you know, I, so Tim definitely speaks differently than I can is, yeah. is what I'm saying. Or anyone, I would say. Or anyone can. Yeah. <laughs> I will spend the rest of my life knowing the word automatonical. <laughs> That's probably my favorite word we've ever used. But I think that's I think that's a fun contrast because Tim's kind of dumb, yeah. But also has this just incredibly expansive vocabulary and like knows yes. all these references, but also then is still kind of dumb. <laughs> like, yeah, it's my it's my favorite thing about the character. He's yeah. so dumb, but he is like mm, I, he's like too dumb to realize that he's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but c- compensates with like references and quick jokes and quips and just oh, he's the best. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with him. Yeah, it's I'm just, glad. Well, I'm glad. Has it gotten easier because it's gotten more technical and you've kind of gotten to the swing of things? Like from season one to season three? Oh, yeah. I mean, I know what I'm doing now. Like, yeah. I feel like I, I do feel more comfortable going through it. Sure. I'll tell you at the beginning of this one, I was kind of. I was like, okay, we're doing this again. Like, uh, you know, right. in, 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 I'm not saying I was in a rut, but I, I there was something. And then I was like, I really snapped myself out of it. And now I'm like super excited about this again. Like I can, cool. I can absolutely just not wait for people to, to get this series. I feel like it's the most personal one I've done. Interesting. And, oh yeah. Yeah. To me, this is, this one's very like if if any of these have been like me working out stuff in my own head it's been yeah. this one like so oh, i i hope cool. other people respond to it like i hope other people respond to it because to yeah. me this is like this is the one i've been if we stopped after this one we're not going to but if we stopped after <laughs> this one i would have gotten out what i needed to get out right what i also need to get out is who killed liam crawford but Tell me beyond that yeah. <laughs> no i'm not no i'm not <laughs> Hey, there are four cast members who know, and it's not you. So well, well, well. All right, oh, all right. I see who the favorites are now. I get it. Is Wait it Callie? You... Is Callie one of them? <laughs> just tell I me if. Tell. Just tell me that. Is it Callie? I won't tell. Oh. Won't tell. All right, fine. I will tell you. Each character knows what their character knows. Each each actor knows what their character knows. Okay, that helps because Eve for sure doesn't know. So all right, all right. Yeah, you, okay can, with you that. can make your own deductions. Wait, do you okay. hear what the uh, wait? Do you, what do you hear this the ending tag on the season is? You know what? I've been thinking about that a lot because oh, really? the last really? yeah, because the first season, if if I remember correctly, there wasn't like a big, like epilogue type thing. Well, it was in the script. It right, was right, actually right, right, in the right. script from day one. So yeah, like we didn't, exactly. I didn't intentionally hide it. Exactly. So when the second season ended, I was like, what is this? Well, and that was kind of an accident. I didn't write that until we were halfway through recording. Really? You sneaky man. Yeah. 
I know. Well, and this one was intentional, right? This one I intentionally withheld because I liked how it went last time. So okay, okay. I'm and you're that. gonna get you're gonna get information that that I don't want didn't want you guys clouding your performances with. So okay, okay. I'm very excited for the upcoming season because it's so weird and it's so crazy it and you so didn't weird. hold back and like oh it was so fun and it was so different like it the characters were the same you could tell that it was like you know tim and eve and Bo and bonnie which is great uh my personal favorite character is bonnie john knows i tell <laughs> she, him all the time she's really been a breakout character she, i mean like by far my favorite character she's i will so tell you good. She, of all the cast members, John is the one who just shameless, shamelessly coaxes me to getting more screen time. <laughs> just like he'll, I'll like ask him some question, like and he'll mess with me saying, "So, so how many time, how many scenes does Bonnie have this season?" It's like they're in a video game all season. I don't know how. Like I don't think Bonnie's going to be in this. Bonnie really should be. Like, couldn't you find a time? She's kind of All important right, as a that. story. <laughs> Can we go out of the video game of like the people at the bar watching the TV? Like exactly. How do we, how do we figure this out. Good for you, John. Keep the battle up. <laughs> <laughs> I support it. Oh, because Rick's such a fun character too, right? Like Rick that's, is fun. That's part of it. Rick is fun. I enjoy Rick. But Bonnie, come on, man. It's yeah, Bonnie. Fair. I wouldn't. <laughs> 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 it's so good. But I, I can't wait. Also, I can't wait for everyone to hear it and then decide the, cor the correct pronunciation of a particular dinosaur. Ah, do you want to tell them what that particular dinosaur is? I'll say it if you, they want the correct pronunciation. I'll say it in the correct pronunciation, and then you can say, see, this needs to be a behind-the-scenes type thing for World it's... of Tomorrow people that listen. This I mean, is a I battle that took this, place. I could pull this out. <laughs> and, and drop it on our feed and then point people back to your show. I mean, if you want yeah. to do that, we can do that. Like, I can Listen, pull out this little clip. Here's the thing. There's a dinosaur. Spoiler alert, guys. There's a dinosaur in the new season. And uh, it is an ankylosaurus. But Ben decides to pronounce it. <laughs> Ankylosaurus, which Ankylosaurus. is how normal people pronounce that word. You know, that's what he says, guys. But listen, <laughs> you got to stick yeah, with yeah, me yeah. on Jurassic this Jurassic Park, one behind the scenes video pronounced. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And who would know more, guys? Regular people like Ben and I or the professionals at Jurassic Park? I'm just saying. Don't dinosaurs have feathers? Isn't that a thing? Didn't you know they get that what? Wrong? Listen, nobody's perfect <laughs> unless it comes to pronunciations. <laughs> I'm so pumped for season three. It's season, how many episodes? Five. Season four. What are you talking about? We're counting season four. the Christmas special as a full season. I, I count the Christmas special as something that's so beyond everything else. It like. Well, this is because you just, that's just because you didn't narrate it. I mean, I didn't narrate it and I loved it <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't narrate it. <laughs> I, what I do love is I did a Christmas episode where someone did. dies at the end. Of course That's fantastic. You did. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> like happy and holidays, everybody. Enjoy. Also, mm -hmm. she was crazy beforehand. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you put her through the ringer. It's, yep. I loved the Christmas special, partly because I wasn't carrying a lot of the weight, but it was so fun and so different. And like, it was just a neat, it was a special. Special is the perfect word for it. It was special, and it was a special. Callie killed it. Everybody killed it. It was awesome. I appreciate that. I really do. When you started World of Tomorrow, did you always plan on making this? On the Christmas special? Yeah. When you started Prototype World of Tomorrow, did you always have a Christmas special in your head? I watched the BBC version of that Charles Dickens story, and I said, I'm going to put this in World of Tomorrow. Like, I didn't even have Ooh. anything else. Like, I was like, okay, I'm doing this one for World of Tomorrow. So really? yeah, yeah, this was this was real early on. I think I was kind of writing the first one while I when I saw that special. I was like, no, this one, this is it, this is it. Okay, okay. We're 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 folding some stories in as holidays. I think we're gonna do a Halloween special next year. Oh, <gasps> sweet! Like I got it plotted out. I think it's gonna be like either a either a one off or like a, a short three episode maybe. But I'm. Yeah, we're ho I'm hoping we do two short seasons next year, like three episodes. 
Sure. Instead of because this is this one should have been six. It, we're 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 doing it in five, but like right. some of these episodes are long. Yeah. Um, yeah, they are. Not that it's bad, but like it's it, not bad at all. It's awesome. No, no. But but uh yeah, um yeah. I think we're gonna do we're we're doing the next one's gonna be kind of the the classic murder mystery. People stranded Sweet. on an island. People getting picked off. And then we're doing a Halloween special. Oh, I can't wait. That's going to be so fun. Mm, I hope so. Wow. I hope so. You, so is there anything that you can tease now outside of the Ankylosaurus uh, for season three that people can expect what they should look forward to, keep an eye out for? Um, I mean, you're going to – it gets weird. You're going to think this is weird <laughs> and then you're going to get to the next episode. Yeah. Like each episode. <laughs> yeah. You better hold on people. For real. Buckle up friends. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good disclaimer. I mean, and it, it is a weirder. fantasy that take, it is a fantasy story that takes yep. place inside a computer that yep. keeps getting deeper into the system. And like, you think you're like, Oh, this is weird. And then you get weirder. Yeah. Yeah, I've said some of the weirdest sentences I've ever said in, in the season. <laughs> it's the line when Spider Ham walks in in the Spider Verse movie. Like it can get weirder. Like, yeah, that's, that was my philosophy for this one. I can see that. We'll get back to that. regular progress next season. This one, okay. This one was was special. Well, I'm glad we went on this journey because uh, you know the new R stuff is really really fun. But what happens when the new R takes place and things are turning into other things and none of it makes sense? Let's do it. I was in. It was so great. Is there is there any advice that you would give to somebody who wants to get into like the audio drama kind of format? Um, I mean, my my general advice is like anyone who wants to be a content creator mm -hmm. is start super specific. Like Ooh, find okay. a small tribe of people that you can make content for that are really being underserved and make content for them and you don't like and then start building out from there um because if you find those core people like those are going to be your evangelists those are going to be the people who love your stuff because it at first you're going to suck because we all suck at first right like that's mm -hmm. part of getting better right like you, you, you suck and then you and you realize how and you have taste so you realize you suck if you're good you have taste yeah. <laughs> and that's like that's hard to get through yeah Big and time. then, but like find the people that you want to make content for and make content for them. Like it, it, it sounds so self-obvious when you say it in, in my mind, but like, it's surprising how people try to make, and I did this too. You try to make this kind of like, oh, it's kind of like 80s movies. You know what? J.J. Abrams is also making something that's kind of like an 80s movie. And he's got a bigger budget than you. And he's got, he's working with more talented people than you are. And, you know, he's, he's, like got more time to devote to it than you do and he's got people helping him um so find the person who's being underserved and make stuff for that person a smart see a need fill a need kind of thing yeah 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 and i i'm not saying like that should that should go along with your passion for storytelling that's not that should totally. be a limiting factor that should be a empowering factor to me because that means you can find people who want to watch your stuff right yeah that makes sense to me and like do what you love because it's a process that's going to take some time and effort and sweat oh, and yeah. tears. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'm not saying be a poser and walk into a place that like, you know, just because sure. like, oh, but like, I'm sure you can find some intersection that like, think of what you would like to watch yeah, and make sure there's at least a few other people who want to watch it and a few other people who will part with a few, a few bucks for it. And sure. Make something for them. What was a pitfall? that happened along your way that you would want to warn someone about? Hmm. Or like, be aware if you're going to go on this journey that this is a thing. Just watch out. I, I would say watch out when you want to involve friends in your stuff. That you, Good advice. That you, that you create clear boundaries. If you want them to still be friends at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. delegating work like understanding if you want feedback from them they're going to give you feedback and it's going to mm -hmm. come with emotional strings attached that yep. may not be happy um and it's okay if your friends don't watch your stuff if you're making stuff for a niche audience 
it's okay if your friend, if you've got some friends who aren't in that niche audience, if they aren't as into it, right? Like maybe they watch yeah. it because they want to support you or something like that, but they're, they're, they're not as into it. And that's okay. That is, that is fine. That is not a reflection on you because you are making stuff for someone. And to me, right. that's the important part. You're finding the people who, who connect with your stuff and like, that's good. Now, if you have friends who are also into your thing and they're not connecting with your stuff, then we get into something that's a little more. <laughs> then you might want to adjust your target, right? Like, right. That's that's my general advice. If you if you're gonna work with your friends on on something, make sure your friends are actually interested in doing it, and good it's point. not gonna kill the friendship. Otherwise, find people who want to make stuff too, and like work with them. Yeah, find your tribe. Yeah. And, but but your your friend tribe, your your professional work friend tribe, your like yep. people I do this tribe, they can all be different social circles. It's fine. Totally. Like you, yeah, find different social circles that help you fill different needs. It's a good point. I like that. So I don't I don't know I don't know if that's helpful or not, but it's definitely helpful, especially for people who like have their friend group and they want it to be their professional group. Like I, I learned that the hard way the first time we shot blisters was I just grabbed mm-hmm. everybody I knew and was like, You hold the boom mic, you are now the director, you're doing this. And we couldn't use any of it. We had to reshoot the whole thing with an actual film crew and people yeah. that I worked with who'd done it before. Mm-hmm. Hard lessons learned. I think that's great advice. Okay, good, good. I'm into it. I'm into it. So when is season three slash four coming out? If you are a Patreon subscriber, we are really trying to get it out October 25th for Ooh. the first episode. And what every episode is going to be a week and a day later. So the Got first it. episode is coming out on a Monday. The second episode is coming out on Tuesday, but not the next day, a week and a day. Week and a day, okay, week and a day, okay. week and a day. Just That's under a fortnight. Just under, well. Just over a week. What, what, just is there a, a term between a week and a fortnight? I don't know. We need to come up with one for next season. Write it's it down, Ben. Ten, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a period of 10 days or something like that. There's got to be. <laughs> Um, and if you're if you're not a Patreon subscriber, you're getting it two weeks after that. So two weeks after that. OK, so a good reason to become a patron on the Patreon yes. October 25th. Yes. Absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. So uh, I just can't wait. That's so soon. I Yeah, I, I got the first. I actually am because I'm talking to you right now. I'm not reviewing the first chunk of the first episode <gasps> from the editor, which I'll do right after we finish this. I like it. I'm actually a lot. pretty excited to hear what came out. So I'm excited for it. And I just realized we've been talking for over an hour. So Ben, you survived. <laughs> Fantastic. Job. You've earned it. We did it, my friend. Great. Fantastic. Before I let you go, I have to ask where can people find you online? Where can they find the things? Talk to me. The things. I mean, you should really just go to a world of uh worldoftomorrowseries.com if you want to if that's what you want um the waltz frozen head twitter account though i mean that's i i just shamelessly promote everything on that basically. yeah <laughs> uh, i mean it started as this kind of parody account if you're into theme parks i recommend it as a follow of course because i run it i make snarky comments about the company um, and the parks and the things so yeah it's a uh, waltz frozen head and there's no o in frozen beautiful beautiful and check out the patreon Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's it. yeah. Just search prototype world of tomorrow on Patreon. You'll find it. Oh, and if you want to watch Walt's frozen head, yes. Um, you really should, should pull that up on YouTube in the near future because it is going to go away at some <gasps> point. I keep threatening that it's oh. going to go away. I know, but it's actually where there's actually been some movement. We've been talking to a few people about getting it on their streaming platforms as an exclusive thing. Oh, cool. I think it's going to happen, but if you want to watch it for free on YouTube, do it soon. Um, get in there it'll, yeah 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 it'll it'll eventually move on to a streaming platform somewhere oh that's good that's good i'm that's exciting not that youtube's so, not a streaming platform but but you know, still we get it still, <laughs> i'm glad it was there i'm glad it was there i'm glad we didn't try and you know do the ten dollars a uh, uh, amazon release i think it just fewer people have watched it and that sort of thing so, exactly we did so, what we did so if you want to be in the on the patreon go there for the the first viewings of world of tomorrow. But if you want to be a part of the cool club, that's seen Walt's frozen head pre streaming service. You can do that on YouTube. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. I love it. And
Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.